This week on Maker Update, a giant mechanical iris, a lightsaber, remote control Arduino, a micro torch, Python boxes, Google hats, processing spirographs, and Maker Fairs. It's Wednesday, May 10th. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you guys are having a great week. I'm excited because Maker Fair is just a week and a half away and I've got the kitty car finished, ready to go, ready to race. Hopefully I don't lose, hopefully I don't hurt myself, and I hope I don't do both at the same time. Uh, but I've got a great show for you lined up this week, so let's get on with it, starting with the Advanced Project of the Week. I'm a little late to this one, but I can't not mention Caleb Craft's awesome giant mechanical iris skylight published over on Make. With the help of CNC router parts, Caleb was able to create a motorized 26-inch iris for a skylight in his home that sort of reminds me of the top hatch on the Millennium Falcon. The iris is made of a combination of Baltic birch plywood for the frame, MDF for the gearing, and aluminum for the interlocking leaves. An Arduino and stepper motor are used to make it open and close. It's beautiful. I'm totally jealous. And the cool thing is not only are the CNC templates for this design available as a free download, but there's also a smaller 10 inch design that might be more practical to build if you have access to a less than gigantic CNC. You can find a link for the project and the files in the show notes. In a slightly easier but no less awesome project last week, Bob Claggett from I Like To Make Stuff made one of the most approachable and exciting lightsaber builds I've ever seen. It's driven by an Arduino compatible Teensy 3.2 microcontroller board with a prop shield plugged into it and powered by four rechargeable batteries. It lights up nice and bright, and the prop shield includes a motion sensor and audio playback, so with the right sound effects, you can really get a satisfying lightsaber experience just swinging this thing around. One more project I want to highlight this week is this remote effects trigger by John Park on Adafruit. John has a fun task ahead of him designing lighting effects for a circus troupe and some illusions for a Vegas magic show. To help with that, he's made a fantastic guide on remotely triggering Arduino projects and relay boards using a reliable, long-range packet radio setup. He's using a handful of Arduino-compatible Adafruit Feather packet radio boards, which can be set up to either transmit or receive. Unlike Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, these link together with no setup, and the radio spectrum is much less crowded. It's just what you want for something theatrical where timing is critical and you want to minimize the possibility of dropouts. If that sounds like something you could use, check out the link in the show notes. Time once again for a one minute review of an uncommon and useful tool from my friends at Cool Tools. This week I'm going to show you guys the Burnzomatic Micro Flame Butane Torch Kit. It's a $34 kit. $34 isn't cheap, but I'm going to show you why this one is special. This torch comes with a nice textured grip, a safety switch, a latch to keep it lit continuously, and a flame adjustment on the side. You also get an adjustment up top that adjusts the air mixture for a less forceful flame. But what really comes in handy is the attachment that's included. By attaching this to the tip, you can turn it into a heat gun, which is useful for heat shrink, which is mostly what I use this torch for. There's also a soldering tip that screws in and lets you use this as a cordless soldering iron. It's a neat option for any outdoor or off the grid soldering. Also, a lot of people use this for jewelry work. And the butane refills are cheap and easy to get at any hardware store. This doesn't come pre-filled though, so you will need to grab some butane and fill it up in order to use it. An Amazon link to buy this exact torch is included in the show notes. And by using that link, you help to support this show and the Cool Tools blog and podcast. The latest podcast has an interview with Ari Gentry founding president of the BioCurious Hackerspace for Biology. It's great. And you can find everything at cool-tools.org. All right, let's talk about a few other tips I found this week. First off, Becky Stern wrote me about last week's show where I mentioned that Pulse Arduino sensor and was confused over the $25 version and the $3 counterfeits I was seeing on eBay. It turns out that the pricier version, the Pulse Amped, is dramatically faster and more reliable than the original which is probably what the knockoffs are based on. Beyond that, it's just important for us to support each other, the products and the companies like World Famous that are part of the maker community. And eBay is a fine place to get all kinds of good cheap stuff. I rely on it often, but 
we should make a point to support each other and not sell each other out to the counterfeits, you know? So thank you, Becky, for the clarification on the sensor and for the helpful reminder. My friend and fellow kitty car builder, Jordan Bunker from Hackaday, showed me this cool online tool called boxes.py. It's a Python-based box generator for laser-cut SVG templates for making boxes, and you can completely customize it. In addition to boxes, there's also trays, drawers, shelves, gears, and even arcade cabinet templates. This past week, the new issue of Magpie came out, issue 57. This one went all out with an included pie hat and project kit from Google. The kit gives you access to Google's Cloud Speech API, allowing you to add voice interaction to your projects. After Amazon's Alexa API has been getting so much love from the Raspberry Pi community, it's nice to see Google competing for our attention too. As always, you can download the entire issue for free from raspberrypi.org, but if you want the kit, you'll have to go find a print issue. I also noticed that Adafruit is now stocking a new version of their Metro board, which up until now I've just thought of as a well-made licensed Arduino clone. This new model though, the M0 Express, acts just like an Arduino, but now has the additional capability of running Python code. That could be interesting. Finally, as some of you who follow my Instagram know, I've been obsessed with my pen plotter recently, just like waking up excited to use it. This week, I had a big breakthrough. One of my favorite processing tools is a program that generates spirographs. I emailed the developer, Julian Grunhagel, and asked if he could add the ability to export vector files right from the program. The next day, he shot back with a new version that exports to PDF, and my plotter art is now super sharp. I love it. So thanks to Julian, and you can find a link to his Spirograph tool in the show notes. His same GitHub account has great resources for glitch art and generative art. I wanted to take a minute to make a few quick plugs here. One is to let you know that not only will I be at Maker Fair Bay Area on the 20th and 21st racing the kitty grabs back, but I'll also be on a panel that Saturday at 4.30 hosted by Gareth Branwin from Make and with Mark Frauenfelder from Cool Tools, John Park from Adafruit, and YouTube DIY star April Wilkerson. If you're at the fair, make a point to check it out. Also, last week was the end of fundraising for the kitty, and I received one last donation from my friend Brian Bennett. So thank you, Brian, and thanks again to everyone who helped support my project. I'd like to do more ambitious and expensive projects in the future without having to turn to a corporate sponsor, so let me know what I could do differently next time to motivate you to chip in. You know, I, uh, I, this is my first time doing it, and I, you, a lot of you guys have experience with this. Let me know what other crowdfunded things have done that have gotten you excited, okay? Leave me some constructive feedback in the comments here, or you can email me directly. I'm Donald at MakerProjectLab.com. I'd appreciate it. Maker Fairs. There are a bunch of Maker Fairs this weekend, including North Little Rock, Slovenia, Madison, Wisconsin, West Tisbury, Massachusetts, Austin, Texas, West Palm Beach, Florida, and Bar, Vermont. If any of those are near you, go check it out and recharge your inspiration. And that's it for this week's show. Be sure to check out that butane torch if that's something that interests you. If you end up buying it with the Amazon link here, I get a few bucks kicked back my way. It's win-win, all right? And uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you haven't already, give me a like or a comment or you can give me a thumbs up on the Maker Project Lab Facebook page. I've never actually promoted the Maker Project Lab Facebook page. It exists. Go like it. And that's it. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.